Close your eyes, focus on your breath, and stay right here. Try to use the mindfulness and alertness that's going to be needed to stay with the breath each time it comes in, each time it goes out. We meditate like this as a way of bringing our virtues that we just took against killing, stealing, illicit sex, lying, intoxicants, which deal with external activities, and we try to bring those into the mind. In other words, meditation is virtue for the mind. We've given rise to a good intention here to stay with the breath, to develop these qualities of mind that we need. So don't kill that intention. That's the first precept for the mind. Any time any distraction comes up, you realize you're going to kill off the goodness you've been developing, so you've got to learn how to let it go, let it go, and maintain that goodness as best you can. And as for stealing, as John Lee says, this refers to we like to steal other people's business and think about it, especially their bad points. This person misbehaved, that person did this awful thing, this person said that. It's like we're stealing their garbage. If you're going to steal something from other people, steal the good things, the good examples they give. But even though we're stealing things from other people, that's not really good. We should focus on what we're doing right now. If we have any unskillful habits, we should learn how to look at them, instead of covering them up by talking about other people's bad habits, or thinking about other people's bad habits. And try to give rise to whatever goodness we can inside. As for sensual thoughts and misconduct and sensuality, you realize this is not the time to be thinking about sensual pleasures, even about how good the meal is going to be in a few minutes. You've got to stay right here. Try to develop a sense of pleasure that comes from within, just being with the breath here inside the body. That's a higher level of pleasure. It puts the mind on a higher level as well. As for the precept against lying, you've made up your mind you're going to stay here, so don't lie to yourself. You're going to stick with the breath, well, make sure you really do. All too often we meditate, only one part of the mind is with the meditation, another part is ready to go. So we can't give in to that other part. It's like it's a committee in here. You've got to get all the members of the committee here together. So when you make up your mind you're going to stay here, everybody's agreed we're going to stay here. And nobody's going to be a traitor to you inside. And as for intoxication, in this case it doesn't refer to outside intoxicants, it refers to our inside intoxicants. We're intoxicated with our youth, we're intoxicated with our health. We're intoxicated with the fact that we're alive now. We don't think that it could, death could happen at any time, aging, illness can happen at any time. Even when you're young, things are already beginning to age. And it just kind of keeps on going down from there. Sometimes young people think, well, if I take care of my body really well, I'm not going to get old like those other people who were irresponsible and didn't take care of their body. That's not the case. The body is going to get old anyhow, no matter what you do. And it doesn't ask permission. So you've got to learn how not to get carried away by these things. And it's a long time before you have to think about the practice, or a long time before you have to take training the mind seriously. You've got to start training right now. Aging, illness, and death can come at any time, so you've got to be prepared right now. Don't put things off. Don't get intoxicated with the fact that you're now young and healthy. Nothing much is going to happen to you. You never know. So because you never know, you have to make your mind prepared at all times. And this is what we do when we meditate. You don't know what's going to happen in the future, but you do know that whatever happens in the future, you're going to need mindfulness and you're going to need alertness. And those are the qualities you develop by staying with the breath. So this way, as you develop these virtues of the mind, you strengthen the mind and protect it. Make sure that the good qualities stay alive inside and the bad qualities leave you alone. You don't get involved with them. That way you should take the virtue of the five precepts and bring it into the mind, and then your virtue becomes complete. Because after all, it's the mind that's in charge of the body and your, and your words. So you want to make sure that it's virtuous as well. When you're talking about the precepts, it's not just a ritual thing of outside actions. It has to go deep into the heart, into your intentions. Make sure your intentions are pure. And that's what we try to do as we develop meditation. We try to purify the heart. That's the source of all good things that are of any worth or value.